Hi, welcome, hello, my name is Shelley and today I am going to talk about the Mediator series. So, as you may or may not know, this year I have been rereading the Mediator series, which to me consisted of the first six books, which I have read like two or three times now. Um, and then uh, I also continued on with the new editions that's like a little novella and like a ten years later kind of thing. It's, it's not actually ten years later, but... You, you get to drift. So it's it's very hard to talk about a series or a book, in this case a series, without spoiling it and I'm I really want to try to not spoil the whole series which is gonna be very very hard um, but wish me luck I am going to try my best. Genre wise the Mediator series would fall under YA, fantasy, paranormal, ghost, romance, those kind of categories. So in all the books we follow Suze, and Suze is a mediator which is sort of a liaison between the living and the dead. In other words, she sees dead people and they won't leave her alone until she has sold their unfinished business. So, Suze is a born and bred New Yorker, which kind of comes across the way she acts and the way she speaks at some points during the whole series. Now, I don't wanna say that this is sort of typecast, like you, you act a certain way, you speak a certain way when you are a New Yorker, however, there are some some things that just kind of screams she's more of a city girl than a country girl. However, Suze's mum has just gotten married to Andy, who is a handyman with his own television show. Yes, Andy the Handyman. So just starting off in book one, Suze has just moved from Brooklyn all the way over to California and she has plans to just stop fresh with trips to the mall instead of to the cemetery and also now she needs to learn how to live in a house with three new stepbrothers but of course things are never that easy are they there's a hot ghost called Jesse who just happens to live in her bedroom and of course he doesn't want her help and he doesn't want to leave either. And then of course there's an angry ghost at her new school who very much is out for revenge and Seuss just happens to be in, in her way. That is kind of the start and premise of the series and also what happens in the book one. Now I won't tell you how everything is resolved but I guess you can kind of guess it's gonna end in one way or another, isn't it? So moving on to book number two, which is called Ninth Key. So Suze has a date with the hottest guy in school and of course there's an old lady ghost who just happens to have direct ties with Tad, who is the hottest guy in school. Um, moving on to book number three, we have Reunion, in which four ghostly teenagers who died in a terrible car accident just happens to blame Suze's classmate Michael. Did he have anything to do with the deaths? You tell me. And with book number four, which is called The Darkest Hour, we are a bit closer to home. When the ghost of Jesse, who is a ghostly roommate, when his former fiance shows up and starts threatening Suze. The backyard construction must cease or else. There's something Maria, who is the fiance, there's something she doesn't want found. What could it be? I wonder. So Suze has a pretty good idea what it could be, you know, in the backyard. She's pretty sure it's Jesse's body that Maria doesn't want found. So up until now, the way Jesse died has been a bit of a, not a secret, but a bit of a mystery, let's say. So he was 
he just happened to be murdered 150 years ago and he's been sticking around for a very long time. So moving on to book number five, we have Haunted. And now a new mediator has shown up. It just happens to be Paul, who we, uh, we met in uh, a previous book. So Suze is very much in love with Jesse, but Jesse isn't really giving her that attention. Also, he's a ghost. It's not really a future there, is it? However, Paul, who is very much alive, is giving Suze a very much needed attention. And previously, this had been the end of the line with book number six, which is called Twilight. Suze is finding out more and more about what it means to be a mediator. Stuff she had no idea dear about. She discovers she has the power to determine who will actually become a ghost in the first place. And it, I, I quite like the ending of this one. It, it, I mean, it's the whole series is basically like, do we need this many books? But it's, it's it, I mean, it's not a series that it would take too seriously. It's very much for entertainment and maybe not much else. The whole series was kind of summarized and ended in a very nice way. But you know, when there is a popular series and you know, an author who just like writes 15 books a year, not literally, but Meg Cabot has been known to write a lot of books in a very short time. Popular series as they go, of course, more came along. So first off, we have a little novella called Proposal. This is kind of where we could be crossing into Spoilerville, which I'm very much trying to avoid. And the title of this novella pretty much says it all. This is a short story which takes place a handful of years after the last book. And like I said, there's really not much to say. Um, the title pretty much sums it up. There's a proposal. Yeah, Winston agrees. And having that novella, of course, now we don't actually have an en ending to the series. So a novel came and this is called Remembrance. And it, I guess it takes, takes a pretty much almost straight after the, the, the little novella. So ghosts both dead and alive come out to haunt Suze. Some more deadlier than others, some more annoying than anything else. So while Suze is trying to find a decade old murder, she's getting blackmailed and she's finding out some hidden truths. While all this is happening, she's starting to question if she'll even make it to her wedding day. Will it end with a wedding or not? Read it and find out. So all in all, it is quite a fun and entertaining series. Yes, you could definitely question if all the books were necessary. I'd say not, because I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could be cut out, let's say. But they are easy reads and they, they are quite entertaining in a way. So the first six books definitely read as an adult trying to stay hip and cool with the kids. It's, it's got very much 90s slang to it, which bear in mind, it came out in the early noughties, like, yeah, it was probably written in later 90s. So the writing in the books doesn't really age well as far as our timeline in the real world. But bear in mind, you could be fairly entertained with some very quick reads. So the last two books definitely give you that the characters have grown up a bit. If only for the fact of how many times Suze expresses her will to bonk her boyfriend. Yeah. So like I said, I do question if 
this many books was necessary for the storyline and I'd say no uh, there's loads of let's say unnecessary things that could just be axed because they don't really give much to drive the story on they're just like fluff pieces on the sides to make it look pretty or whatever so like I said uh, I really did like the ending of book number six. It was like a finished, it was definitely a rounded up finishing of the series as a whole. But having now read the last, <laughs> last, the last, last book, let's hope it's the last book. We don't actually need any more. <laughs> so, but I, I would say that I did actually like this ending a lot more so whether you should read this series if you haven't already is really up to you but remember that it's 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 very much written downwards if you're an adult you may not be as entertained by it as it's intended so yes the writing doesn't age well but bearing that in mind you could actually quite enjoy it so if you just want quick entertaining reads or you just want those extra points for your goodreads goals or whatever here's some quick reads book for you but I mean they are a couple of hundred pages long so if you have read the first six books the original series as it were but you haven't picked up the last two the last two books if you like the series I'd say go for it they are slightly better especially the last one the the little novella one is just like a back introduction to the series to the characters the the writing in these are slightly better let's say not that the writing is bad in the first ones it's just that it's just like what i said previously it's it's very much not aged very well <laughs> so that was a very bad <laughs> summarization thingamajing I'm not sure what to call this truth be told but um yeah I did want to talk about all the books in a whole uh, I don't think I did this the way I wanted to do it but there you go first one down maybe the next time I do this with a different series obviously it will be better fingers crossed <laughs> So that is all for me today. You know what to do and I shall see you next time. Until then, take care and bye bye.